Welcome to Rebecca Athletes. My name is Mark Elliott, the Athletic Director, and first let me say how good it is to have you back on campus. I know it's been a long time, and I wish things were more normal, uh, but I guess new normal is the thing, right? As you are well aware, and I don't have to tell you about this, we face a very uncertain and in some ways very trying year coming up, both spiritually, academically, and athletically. And what I want to do in the next 10 minutes is I want to give you some clarity on some of the decisions that were made, some by us and some by others, that have profoundly affected your college careers. Uh, you've probably heard a lot of voices and a lot of different opinions, so let me take a moment to set the context of where we are now and how we got here and how we plan to move forward. First, how we got here. Since May, we've worked and amended plans over and over due to the changes in COVID responses, both by federal, state, and local governments, as well as Treveca's administration and the athletic department. But again, we've seen like so many times, and you've experienced this, much of our plans have changed. When on Tuesday, August the 4th, the NCAA Board of Governors met to specifically decide the fate of fall sports. This is football, soccer, volleyball, cross country. The Board of Governors decided to pass the responsibility to each of the divisions within the NCAA, that's Division I, II, II and III, to make unilateral decisions for themselves. In other words, they said, we're not gonna make the decision you're gonna to have to decide for yourselves. But they did so with the caveat that we had to adhere to some specific requirements if choosing to go forward with sports in the fall. More on those specific requirements in a moment. Okay, so the next day, August the 5th, the, D2, the Division II President's Council met to decide the fate of D2 fall sports. The D2 President's Council voted to cancel all fall championships, period. That's it. Fall championships for the NCAA were canceled. Winter and spring will be decided upon later. And subsequently, they also passed down the directive that the conferences, the GMAC, for example, in essence, they said you must conduct fall sports however you like, whenever you like, but you have to adhere to the guidelines set forth by the NCAA Board of Governors. And here are a couple of those specific requirements originally mandated by the NCAA. This is standing in the way of not only competition, but also simply participation, even just to practice. Number one, testing is a requirement. This is not temperature screening. This is a test, and the, currently it must be a PCR test, and the turnaround time of getting the results back has to be 72 hours. Approximately $100 per test, probably 270 athletes here at Treveca, plus coaches, trainers, and staff, is a bill of about $30,000. Oh, and by the way, you have to do it every two weeks. The money, the tests, the turnaround times, um, we're not available. We don't have the resources for the vast majority of institutions in Division II. Number two, and here was the real kick in the gut for us, member schools were gonna be mandated to cover all COVID-related health costs relating to infections that the local health officials reasonably believed that were the result of student athletes' participation in any kind of sport. On that day, the day that I heard this, I said to myself, there's no way that we can comply with these requirements. Simply stated, we don't have the resources to comply with the mandates. That was a sad day, but don't give up hope. We're not finished yet. And so it moves from the NCAA level down to the conference level. Um, on August the 10th, the GMAC President's Council voted, and they, well, they met and they voted to decide on recommendations that we had forwarded as athletic directors to them. Remember, it's the President's who run the GMAC conference. They made the difficult but necessary decision, and we agree with them, to move all high contact risk sports, volleyball and soccer, to the spring. However, they made a very bold decision to hold cross country, a medium to low contact risk sport, in the fall. They did so for two reasons. Number one, cross country runners also compete in indoor track and outdoor track, so where would we even try to place a cross country championship in the spring? But number two, and even more bold, they wanted to have one sport, one engagement of the season to be accomplished as a means to say we can safely return to play. Now, y'all, somebody, somewhere, somehow needs to be able to successfully complete a season in order to open sports back up into society. And we feel like that our best chance is through cross country and possibly golf. Okay, that's how we got here. Now, how do we move forward? Our primary goal has always been through this pandemic, 
how do we provide a meaningful experience for our athletes? How do we maximize your ability to train, practice, and compete? And how do we possibly do it safely through a pandemic? Thankfully, the more recent interpretation of some of the NCAA's resocialization requirements have eased up or at least have been nuanced to the point of our acceptability to some of these requirements. Likewise, we have found some tests, protocols, and legislation which have lessened the financial burden on the athletic department. Therefore, with that in mind, we've constructed a timeline for teams to return to play that will achieve the goal of giving you a meaningful athletic experience and to do it as safely as possible. First, I made the decision with the advice from the coaches to close all facilities for the first two weeks of classes. Our job, our game, our commitment to each other for the first two weeks of school is to learn re-socialization practices of self-screening. That's the temperature checks and the conscious evaluation, self-evaluation of your own health. Then wearing masks, physical distancing, and hand sanitation. Now, if, if we can successfully accomplish this without a significant outbreak in the first two weeks of classes, then, then and only then, maybe we can open up venues to start to train. Let me be direct. Baseball and softball, you want a season, you gotta support and help us accomplish a cross country season. Basketball, soccer, volleyball, you want a season, you need to help allow golf to maintain healthy and safe return to play. It's up to all of us. That means screening, that means masks, that means distancing, and that means sacrifice for the good of others. It may or it may not be an overstatement. We have 270 athletes, but one reckless, one careless, one selfish decision can bring this whole thing down. Second, we found a company who can supply tests and turnaround time of 72 hours. We have ordered enough tests for the cross country team and the golf and the athletic trainers and some of our inner bubble staff. Unfortunately, we can't order enough tests for the entire athletic department all at once. Our goal is to train the athletic trainers to administer the tests for golf and cross country this week, to receive the results back next week so that they are able to start practice on Friday, August the 28th. Other sports will follow on a priority schedule that tests, as tests become available. Third, Friday will be another important NCAA meeting day with potentially significant decisions that could affect our plans. The NCAA Administrative Council will meet to provide some interpretations on questions that we are asking related to testing and other requirements to allow teams to start training. There will also be providing updated guidance on student athlete eligibility and any relief and waivers that might be granted to fall sports athletes. This could also affect our decision how to move forward, how to schedule, and how to play throughout the fall. In closing, obviously, we have to continue to evaluate how we can safely return to train. But let me say this, we are all mutually responsible. Now in the end, we have a responsibility to each other. And our first two weeks are supremely important in trying to be able to get back to training and to get back to something that's what's known, known as new normal. Your job, my job, all of our jobs is to, for the first two weeks, take care of ourselves as safely as we possibly can. After that, we can possibly open up into training and even to competition with cross country and golf. You guys are Christian scholar athletes. You are here at Trevecca because you wanted more than just an athletic experience, but your athletic experience is supreme here. And we desire to give you an excellent, as good as we possibly can experience, meaningful experience, so that you could participate this fall. All of us want that. So be the Christian scholar athlete that we ask you to be. Finally, be prayerful for all of us. We have many people across the country who have said there are five conferences who are left trying to participate this fall. And we have people praying for us. Somebody, somehow, as I said earlier, has got to try to get a season in. And we all will do as much as we possibly can to allow cross country and golf to be that lead edge that gets us started. In conclusion, I'd like to quote from a movie, it's one of my favorites, Apollo 13. It was a 
rocket launch that uh, NASA had, and there were some very bad things that were happening, uh, the near catastrophe. The people were saying that this could be the worst catastrophe in the history of NASA. Project manager leaned forward and said, I believe this can be our finest hour. I believe this can be our finest hour right now, students, Christian scholar athletes. As we work together to get this to a successful conclusion, we need everybody. We need everybody to be on board. And so at this time, I'm praying for you. Let's pray for each other. Let's continue to work together to create a Christian scholar athlete culture so that we can have a successful working of this year's seasons.